From early 80s arcade games to Insomniac's modern blockbuster, Spider-Man has swung his way across consoles time and time again. Today on Game Files, we're taking a look at the history of Spider-Man video games. We're not going to take a look at every game though, because there are nearly 40 of them, and honestly, most of them suck. What they've been consistently, however, are products of their time. Starting with the first Spider-Man game, which was called Spider-Man. The first game featuring the web crawler was released in 1982 for the Atari 2600. It largely revolved around climbing buildings to defuse the Green Goblin super bomb, at which point you would climb another building and do the same thing. There was no real variety to the game, which was to be expected considering the era. The second Spider-Man game is weirder, due to the fact it's a text adventure. Quest Probe, featuring Spider-Man, follows the hero as he journeys through an apartment building looking for items to solve puzzles and defeat villains. There were only four Spider-Man games in the 80s, and considering the quality, it was for the best. But just as the decade was ending, one Spider-Man game would set the template for the next 10 years of Peter Parker's digital adventures. The Amazing Spider-Man and Captain America in Doctor Doom's Revenge is a mouthful, but it was the first Spider-Man game to feature actual action. This was a side-scrolling combat game, where either Spidey or Cap fought Marvel villains one-on-one. -on -one. It was simplistic, and the story was bare bones. Yet during the 90s, nearly every Spider-Man followed its pattern of side-scrolling action. And there were a lot of Spider-Man games released that decade. Between 1990 and 1999, 14 games starring Spider-Man were released. Some, like Spider-Man vs. the Kingpin, were fun platformers that still hold up to this day. Others, such as Spider-Man Web of Fire, are best remembered for their graphics. Despite their number, they all followed a similar pattern, which grew tiresome after a while. So when Spider-Man swung into 3D, the result was stunning. Tony Hawk Pro Skater developer Neversoft repurposed its engine for 2000's Spider-Man, allowing players to swing around New York City with full control. Sure, there's an ugly yellow fog covering the streets that kills our hero if he touches it, but it felt good to be free from two-dimensional space. With Spidey now able to exist in 3D worlds, the stage was set for his biggest game yet. The Spider-Man film trilogy was a huge hit at this time, and so developer Treyarch began work on a game to capitalize on the franchise. The result was Spider-Man 2. With the fully explorable open world, controls that are simple yet sublime, and some balloons that need rescuing, Spider-Man 2 is a classic. It did have some rough voice acting and bad mission design, but any faults were overshadowed by the game's ability to make playing as Spider-Man feel great. When Spidey used his webbing, it actually had to connect to the sides of buildings in order to work, instead of magically touching the sky. Spider-Man 2 not only set a high bar for other games featuring the hero, it set the bar for superhero games in general. Unfortunately, Treyarch's time as Spider-Man's developer would come to an end after only a handful of games. Activision owned the rights to Spider-Man at the time and handed the series reins over to Canadian developer Beanox. Annual releases meant that Beanox's Spider-Man games never felt like they had the polish needed to be great. From 2007 to 2014, Spider-Man games were mediocre at best. And in the case of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, actually bad. As one critic said while playing it, I actually feel like a part of me has died. Oof. It's no surprise that Activision did not renew the license to make Spider-Man games after that one. While it would take a few years, the next and to date latest Spider-Man game would make all those bad memories go away. Insomniac Games released Marvel's Spider-Man in 2018, which pushed the web crawler to heights not seen since Spider-Man 2 in 2004. A gripping storyline, well-designed world, and most importantly, fantastic web-swinging gameplay made it a hit with players. As for what the future of Spider-Man video games holds, Spider-Man Miles Morales launches with the PlayStation 5 next month and from the looks of it, appears to be another solid Spider-Man entry. Insomniac will be in charge of Spidey for the foreseeable future, which means you can look forward to more stellar adventures starring everyone's favorite web crawler and friends in the years to come.